You've seen the endless memes and comics of Tyrannosaurus Rex with useless small arms from not being able to pass the potatoes in Gary Larson cartoons to having difficulty placing the star on top of a Christmas tree. It's funny to think about for sure, but what is the scientific reason behind those small arms? And what possible use could they have had? That's what we will be exploring today. The following video takes an in-depth look into the anatomy and morphology of Tyrannosaurus Rex based on the currently available literature such as scientific articles, experiments, and paleontology books in order to portray an informative picture to one of the most studied prehistoric creatures of all time. Probably the best way to start analyzing T-Rex's small arms is to look at them in terms of natural selection along with his family tree. Natural selection is a complex process. It boils down to traits that are successful are passed down to future generations, while traits that aren't are eventually eliminated. Let's take a look at the ancestors of the Tyrannosauridae, the family from which Tyrannosaurus came from. One of the ancestors of Tyrannosaurus, Eotyrannus, was found in Britain in 2001. The ancestor had similar bone structures to that of Tyrannosaurus, but was different in that it possessed longer forearms and a smaller skull. Now, if an ancestor of T-Rex, who had long forearms and a small skull, went through an evolutionary process to become a dinosaur with smaller forearms and a larger skull, there should be a logical reason for it. The long forearms must have not aided their ancestor's survival 120 million years ago, and gradually those born with smaller forearms were more successful in hunting, thus surviving and leading to their genes being passed on more frequently. Thus, the genes controlling forearm length and skull size led to the natural selection of Tyrannosaurs to evolve into dinosaurs with smaller forearms and larger skulls. Looking at it from another angle, the fact that Tyrannosaurus ended up with a very large skull and small arms is an example of a concept in biology called morphodynamic compensation. As outlined in an article dedicated to T-Rex's arms in Tyrannosaurus Rex Tyrant Kingdom by Martin Lockley, Reiji Kukihara, and Lauren Mitchell. What this basically means is that no organ can develop without a reciprocal effect on another organ. The easiest way to see this concept with current animals would be to take a look at frogs and salamanders. Salamanders have very small heads but long tails. Conversely, frogs have very large heads and no tails at all both excellent examples of this compensation principle. In this same article, the authors note that there are various stress fractures in T-Rex's forelimbs indicating that the forearms were definitely used for something and weren't purely vestigial as some have suggested. As a matter of fact, thorough calculations were performed to see the amount of force that could be generated by those arms, and it was around 1,150 kilograms of force or 11,270 newtons. Of this, the biceps generated about 40% of that force and was thus a major muscle. The force at that elbow joint was evaluated to be at 322.3 kilograms. For comparison, an average human male at the elbow joint has a force of about 128.25 kilograms. What those numbers indicated is that the forearm of Tyrannosaurus was capable of resisting large forces and moving at high acceleration, thus strengthening the hypothesis that the forearms were in fact used during predation. Due to their size, however, it's unlikely they were used for striking and were most likely used for gripping. Another possible use for the small forearms could have been for the simple act of just standing up. According to an in-depth study done by Kent A. Stevens, Peter Larson, Eric D. Wills, and Art Anderson, T-Rex could use his arms in the very same way that sprinters use their hands when shooting off the blocks in a race. The two options T-Rex may have had for getting up from a resting position were to either stand up in a sprinting start, something highly likely for a young Tyrannosaur to do, and the second option, for perhaps an older Tyrannosaur, was to stand up in a much more gradual way while using the forelimbs to help stabilize the body. T-Rex would place his arms very much in the same way as sprinters do, where the arms would have been pivotal in this operation, as with sufficient elevation achieved, T-Rex could push back and regain bipedal balance, and complete its ascent to a standing pose. So why were T-Rex's limbs so small? Because over time the Tyrannosaur family evolved from an animal with medium-sized limbs and skull to a massive skull and small forearms. This evolution is also supported by the concept of morphodynamic compensation. However, the arms were not purely vestigial, as there were several stress fractures indicating that they were used for something. Not only that, they were capable of outputting high levels of force. Now, whether the arms were used for gripping prey or standing up is debatable, but it's known that they were used for something. But at the end of the day, perhaps we should adopt Gregory S. Paul's view on the small arm situation he expressed in Predatory Dinosaurs of the World, and that the reduced size of T-Rex's forelimbs showed they were not important to their owner, and that therefore, they should not be important to us. If you enjoyed this video, I highly recommend checking out the playlist of my other T-Rex videos, as you can see a video of him fighting Spinosaurus, how strong his jaws were, along with how smart he was too. I'd like to thank each one of my Patreon members as their contribution helped in the making of this video. If you'd like to contribute and appear in the credits in the future, my Patreon page is Godzilla Rex and it's in the description below.